Hallelujah. Everything that possess Ruak, living power of Yah's testimony. For we know that his Dabarim, his Daba, the promises of his Torah, they are excellent toward Israel. And so in the midst of all of our great calamities, in the midst of the agony of trials, conflicts in our minds, concepts that we have developed by our own unwillingness to apply our minds to Torah, to learn, to understand the promises of Yah. That if we, as Arzachim pointed out to us last night, David, I am the one. You all were not listening, so you didn't hear him. He, by the wisdom, the knowledge of Torah, he could say, I have kept. The one that came after him, your sure said the same thing. All those that you have given unto me, I have kept them all. Except the son of perdition. The thing of it is that Torah is not a delight to a nation that is so bent on their twisted ideas and their philosophies. We are self-righteous people, are we not? I'm not going to patronize our sins, Israel. I'm not going to appease us to give us some kind of solitude that we are right with Yah. Now if I ask us the question, how many of us can answer honestly? I propose this to you to ponder. The Torah commands us to work out our own yoshach, our deliverance, with fear, yare, and trembling. To work, to asa, to, to mitzvah, to labor, our own nefesh, our own salvation. And he gives us the components of how we must do it with fear and trembling. We don't fear a damn thing. But death, when you think you're dying, being caught in your wickedness, but we don't tremble before you. Let us just become genuine and get real. Quit pontificating. We're not going into the kingdom just any kind of way. Above all things, I'd rather be real and not walking in the spirit of sonef or hypocrisy. But I was thinking that Yah has kept me all these years in my ignorance, and I'm still ignorant, faithful in all regards. That no man can hold anything against me. You can't say they've seen me run with women and chase after things or lust for things. You cannot say that. And that's not the sign of a messenger of Yah. But if a man is faithful in the least little things, he can be faithful in the abundance and the great things. And so our commitment unto Yah, it is subpar. We don't believe nothing in this book. You know, the Lord child said to me this morning, Zeria, she says to me, she says, Papi, Sipor and I, we have become friends. I said, okay, what was the Constitution? What made you all become friends? She says to me, 
She was awakened on last night. And she says to me, Sarai. And I said to her, yes, Sipora. And we hugged each other. And we just hugged each other. So being the investigative mind that I possess, I go to the little one and say to her, so hurts. You and your sister became friends. Are you all friends still? Of course, at that time, she is jockeying for position. Moving Sarah I so she can take the prime real estate. She wants the perch. She wants to stand on the stool so she can see and appear to be taller than her. So with her dissertation, she finally affirmed their friendship by saying, she's my friend. Ah. Hmm. Oh, I know how we think. Because one upsets one or offends one, that discount the friendship. I'm going to continue on the teaching, don't worry. There are times that little ones say things that are the fiber. And they bring out the essence of what you need to teach. I always look for a khatuv, a scripture, that will pronounce the essence of all that I will teach today. And I found it here. Because of the child's words. He has established a great nation. An Amrav Atta. A great nation. Within the complexity of our own nationality or our own concepts of what we shall be. He is the one that has made and created it by a great constitution. And that constitution is his berith. His Brits, his covenant, his allegiance, his alliance with a nation, a people. So I ask us a question to ponder. The Torah speaks of the great men, Abraham, Abraham, Abram, Avram. He was a gadol, a great man, of great significance, whereby the birth of the covenant lies with him. Whereby the essence of his loins will bring forth the light of the seed to produce a great nation. And that constitution was sealed in Abraham, Yisrael. It was sealed in him. It had validity in Abraham. The great constitution. The aggregates. Of the sum of his psychological, physiological, spirituality shall be based upon the dabarim, the promises. He was able to hold fast to all he said. I'm saying that because of what the little child said. So I brought out the scenario because I know how we think. Oh, they will be fighting this evening. And yet we fight without any stirring of one's mind to create opposition, we fight. 
And yet, you say you're friends, don't you? Sisters with sisters. Brothers with brothers. Mothers with daughters and fathers with sons. And the line goes on. We are self-grandizing people. And because we're self-grandizing, we always promote me. We promote me. I promote me. I promote me. And it's the sense of uh, a depleted character when one has to diminish or diminish the character of others. Well, you do that all the time. No, I rebuke the sin of a nation that is corrupt, that is vile, that is wicked. I reveal the corruption of a people, a nation that rejects its truth. We can do all things according to the Torah if we began to allow the testimony to be established in us. Something is twisted. You keep falling to the same things, to the same activities and events. It's almost like one being unfaithful, and yet they consistently. Man fails when he comes to the knowledge of truth, he never goes back that way. A woman fails, she never goes back that way. So we tend to, as a nation of people, we have this great esteem of ourselves. We don't see our worthlessness. It's only the promise. That's why he gave us a great constitution. I want to read this. I'll tell you where it is when I finish. One of the most profound utterance out of the loins of a great nobi, a prophet. I was looking in this book. And of course I can see where I put the yellow lines and highlighted things. But it wasn't highlighted in my heart. I will hide in Torah, in my bosom, that I will not sin against you. And so as I thought of what the child said this morning, we don't hear children. We don't hear them. And I like to hear them because they say wise things. What is that? Well, you don't need to understand the essence of it. Now, one day you will. Don't worry about it. That's my reply. Don't worry about it. It's too heavy of a load for you right now. But this is what our Abbas says. Now, you must understand that the sum of Yah, his value, his worth, the components of whom he is, which is nothing but one thing, his Torah. He is Ra'ach, he is life. His Torah is a life. And so the sum of him, the aggregate of his character, his personality, was formatted and formed, shaped in a constitution, a beri, a covenant to a nation, to a people, to one that he had elected. According to his sovereign, his power, his ability, that no one can question him. Period. Irregardless to what this superficial uh, hybrid intelligence says, uh, and try to impose upon him, he is still great. And everything that man has learned, everything has come uh, from a book. It has come by writing. So damn this generation that says that the Torah is insignificant. Everything that everyone has learned. When the door of wisdom began to open, whether it was sadiq, righteous, or evil. Ra, that has been transposed by writing to remind to keep us attentive of it, that we can always go and uh, research the resources to come to the ultimate conclusion that what is to my advantage 
and that will strengthen me and give me the resolve, whether it's right, whether one is learning evil, sadistic, wicked ways. It only, and it has always come by the words, the establishing of words, to transmit, to cause them to advance in the generations after the philosopher. So when Yah could give man nothing in a greater, he declared on himself, my words is my bond. My word is my character. My word is my immutability. I cannot lie. And the life of the Torah is the ultimate to prove I cannot lie. Before there was a formation of an earth, he knew that he would have a great seed to magnify his name beyond the stratospheres of the universe, the Milky Ways, whatever we want to identify them in the scientific mindset. That the praises of our about would serenate the heavens above the Jumayim and the Melokim will hear the cry of a nothing creation but from dirt. All flesh rots. It all dies. It all stinks. Don't bathe for two days and you're fine. Don't clean yourself. You'll find out. So when Yaakov made this constitution of great strength and validity, he could only do it one way. I want to read this for us. The prophet says it, not me. He said, but you, but thou, O Israel, 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 you that have prevailed. You that have overcome. You that have been sustained as Azarkane taught us last night. Uh, that I can. By myself. By the reliance upon this living Torah. That I hide it. We hide sin and corruption don't we? We hide lies and the false pretenses. We hide our corruption pretending that we love and we are fair. We're full of our own shysting, our own dung, our own giluth. Yah says, I cry to you, nation. He said, you are my servant. You are my abbot. You are the ones that delight in my counsel. You are the ones that care for me and you serve every aspect. Of my Torah with great inspiration because you know who the commanding general is. He identifies his nation. He calls out Yaakov, the supplanter. He says, Yaakov, he is a supplanter. I wasn't worth a damn and I'm still not worth a damn thing. All flesh is as grass. The skin worms, the maggots are going to eat it, whether you're baby, whether you're one month old, ten months old, or 99, 109. The maggots will consume your flesh. And to think because this one is small, it's more grandizing than that one, you're wrong. Man said to me the other day, but you seem so angry. I said, I am angry. He could not deal with the magnitude of my speech. He could not respond. And so there were hypothetical injections. That I dismantled like a warrior. And he finally concluded out of all of that. I like talking to you. I really do. By the way he was a Caucasian man as we would say. And I dealt with the spirit of destructual lies, of deception, of racism, and falsism. And he could not battle that from the concept of even your Jesus. 
He said, I appreciate you. I like talking to you. And so he gave me a bigger discount that day than he generally does. Hallelujah. I shall, my friend, to die. But thou, old Yisraeli, he said, you are my servant, Yaakov, whom I have bought here. I've elected. I've chosen. I placed my hand upon him. I have chosen. Not his mother. Not his daddy. But he has chosen. You man. You man. Not her. Not him. I wasn't even in the picture. But he has. He said, whom I have chosen, the zira, the seed, the seed you are. He says of Abraham, Abraham. And he calls him with the declaration of personalizing it. He says, my friend, my reah, my friend, my friend. Friend, my friend, I've established my berith, my covenant, my life in Avraham that shall come forth out of the loin, the loin of Yitzchak. And there shall be two Esav, and there shall be another the supplanter. His name shall be Yahoo. Yet he shall wrestle with the commands of Yah. And with the power of the witness of Hamashiach light upon him. Uh, you will know that he has overcome. That's why we have not overcome. That's why we have not prevailed. We don't have the greater power of Yah in us. Every great, great kingdom have power. It has power. It has strength. This is not a great kingdom here, America. It is one of tyranny and cowardice. Any man can from his drones and have powerful weapons shoot. But let him get down on the ground. That's why in Vietnam, over 55,000 young men died. With an army against an army that was less formidable, huh? With military hardware, then this wicked nation with France, with all of them, with Germany, the support soldiers, uh, and the only nation that did not support that uh, is north of us, Canada. Canada would not send one soldier to Vietnam. Canada would not send one support unit. And even during the diaspora of the people, those that could make it to those shores, uh, they were free. Listen to the story that, what's the name of it? Elijah, listen to that. That's a true story. One day, Yas will, if he ever grants me the fun, if I go to Canada, but for one thing, to see that community. You understand? We don't want to deal with reality. He says that Abraham, Abraham is my friend. You hear that? He says, Thou whom I have taken from the ends of the Olam and call you from the chief men thereof and said to you, Abraham, you are my servant. You are my friend. I have chosen Yisraya Yahura. Listen to me. I've chosen you. I've elected you, he says. He says, I have chosen. I can. I have chosen you. And I shall not. And I shall never. And I will not. And it cannot be. I will not cast you away. And although Abraham in the midst of his great battles. Uh, but he said to his wife. Tell King Ea that I am your brother. He didn't cast him away. The constitution was in him. The constitution was, was not Abraham. It was what? 
was elected by Yah. And Yah used him to establish the aggregate, the sum of Torah, the depth of Torah, the wisdom of Torah. He knew that Abraham would keep the Torah and teach his house the ways of Yah. Are we teaching ours? The world teaches their daughters how to be two dollar whores. They teach their sons to be rebellious. Are we teaching our sons and our daughters to love Yah? They're teaching them to love every kind of horse spirit, every kind of unclean thing. But are we teaching them the ways of Yah? Oh, I know what we say. Hell, we teach them Walmart and Kmart and the damn dollar mart. We teach them defiance and lies and corruption to be hard-headed. We don't teach them truth. When you teach, the word is lomat. You must instruct. And the word lomat is to reproof, to rebuke, to set in order. Now the elderly daughters teaching the young women the beauty of Kadosh, the elderly Zochim, the Zochim teaching, the young men the strength of age. They declare their strength in their age and their beauty. Their poor name reflect the identity of the wisdom of Yah. And that we see a corrupt identity in our presence. I chose the latter because that's what is reflected from us as a whole and you too. Damn your phony smiling and your grinning. That's why people all the years I've preached, even in my ignorance, they have not been able to bear with me. You don't make a warrior. You don't strengthen any man by coddling them. You don't make a warrior by giving him things that are subpar. He has to go beyond the limitation of his minds, uh, his, uh, his agony, the pains of his thoughts. And he has to go beyond that. That's why everybody is not a warrior. We can be soldiers. But that doesn't mean you're a warrior. Everybody wasn't like Uriah. The warriors of David, everybody was on like Mahale. Ah, Mahale. Mahale. I shall take my time. It's going to rain. What else to do? This is Yah's day. But everyone wants to associate with that. And make themselves think that one is of that stature. You find a strong man, you will know. You will see it on him. I don't care if he's 99, 39 or 59. You don't find a strong man at 22. You don't. My physical strength and that did not apex until really I was in my 50s. I was strong physically. Lift more weight, move more poundage. True. Although I was strong when I was 28, 29, 30. But the physical capacity, it did not zenith until I was about 53, 54, 55. So you will know a strong warrior. He's glad to receive. He's anxious for the command of the general. There's always anticipation and expectation here. You see it. What is the command? We can go forth and take it. The making, the creation, the bazaar of a great nation. An Amrav Atta, a great people, a great people within a people. A great nation within every upon every continent as man has declared it. Every nation. There is a nation within that nation. And it is a great nation. And there are signs of that great nation. There's a constitution in that great nation. And that constitution is established by aggregates or the sum of everything. 
We must sum up the Torah of Yah. That's why we need teachers and guidance uh, and leaders to guide us uh, and to teach us. Uh, we need the elderly mothers to teach and guide, to rebuke. We can't do it because of our own wickedness, our own corruption. And that's just the truth. Hallelujah. I read to us, and I want to again on Kitve Imat from Shirak. Just listen. My first scripture came out of Yeshaya. Find it. Listen. Shirak says, Better off is a poor man who is well and strong in constitution. He has a berith, he has a covenant. Let me show you the simplicity of a berith or a covenant, an allegiance that would strengthen one in the physiological and the psychological and the spiritual reality. It's like a man that constitute unto himself, I won't do this, I won't do that, I'm not going to do that. Can I give us a simple scenario? I will show you. I was reading the other day. I don't read what I say that. I capture it in the first paragraph. There's a basketball player by the name of Dwight Howard. He makes, I, I don't know, $20 million a year. And so the capture says Dwight Howard has given up all sugar. I'm saying, why? I like coconut cake. Banana pudding. I like it. And there's nothing like a beautiful, nice cinnamon roll that uh, it messes you up. And so the question was why? Even your teammates are somewhat befuddled. Now you are the one that plans the menus. And you tell the coaches and staff, these are the kinds of food that I want to eat. And so his reply was, well, they mock me, but they're young. This man is only, what, 28, 29? He's played basketball since he was 18 in the NBA. The toll on one's body. He said, they will understand and see the effects and how it affects one's body one's mind and when they learn they will stop as well so he has by the aggregate of his physiological things that he can i things that have been revealed unto him uh, that they are affecting your physicality uh, and if you abandon this it will make you strong it will cause your body to produce the tight insolence and substance to make you strong and you heal faster. So he wrote off those kinds of things. Same with us. We must write them off. That's why the Torah teaches us that we write these things off. We don't write them off. We don't write them off. So Barry is a poor man who is well. But he has a strong constitution. Well, nobody cares for me. Keep the constitution of Torah. Hallelujah. Don't fellowship with darkness. Don't be a part of the dark, devious works of darkness uh, to say you have fellowship. Uh, you do not conform to the standards of the wicked to say that I need fellowship. Uh, it's better to be that way with a strong uh, covenant or a strong relationship with Yah. He says uh, that a rich man... Uh, whose mind, whose body thoughts are severely damaged. We can't even think cognitively. We can't think straight. We cannot even analyze consciously. I was in the store the other day. So here it was. I got this cart full of things. My issue has this buggy full of things. And so as the woman swiped my cards, she says to me, your card needs to be renewed. Oh, I could sense her corruption, her juvenile nature. So she says to me, you must renew it. I said, 
Well, I must. And then her voice became as though that she was upset with me. For what? Well, I must ask you. Because you might not want to renew it. So I said, I didn't say anything. I look at the card like. Do you literally think that I came in here to play? To put all that on the cart and say I'm not going to buy it. This is a stupid generation. It's stupid. It's dumb. And what upset her even the more was a woman that works there. She walks up to my Rafael and she says, Hi, beautiful. You look so beautiful. She says to her, That's I said to myself, wow, she, I didn't realize she had on a lot. Didn't pay no attention to it. So when she did that, the woman that was waiting on her, uh, she says to my Rafael, how is Christmas going? She says, because I said to her before, don't ever, with these damnable pagan lies of Christmas and this butchering of things, lies, Hog Day, that they butchered and massacred Indians to steal their land. Don't ever be offended to tell them. If she would have asked me, I would have said, damn Christmas. Damn it. So when my Rafael said, well, no, I don't celebrate that. She, I said, look at this damn fool. I just looked at her. Like, you are silly. You are so stupid. We defend that which is our lies. We defend the corruption of our own heart. We won't defend righteousness. That which is right, we won't defend that. We will defend that which is utterly depraved. When it comes to right, nobody defends a righteous man. Nobody! Because everybody knows more than a righteous man. So it's better to have a strong constitution if you have nothing else. As the old ones would say, I will stand on my words. I stand on those grounds. And I will not alter one thing at all. That's a friend. And Yah has not, he will not. His dabarim, his promises are still unto the zira of Abraham. Through the very order of the generation of Yitzchak. That produce Yaqub Yisrael. Not unto Ishmael, but unto the Zira, yeah. unto the seed of the chosen, as he has elected Yaqub for what? To establish a great nation, a great people, a people that nations marvel at, a people whose customs are beyond profound. Whose wealth is beyond equivalence. And yet we are damn poor beggary people. And don't have a damn thing. You have learned the way of the Gentiles quite well. To be selfish and greedy. I'm going to teach. Hallelujah. Hear this. Yah speaks of his profound. I'm so glad that this is in his hands to redeem us. Aren't you glad of that? He speaks, hallelujah, of his power. He's not going to redeem everyone. He's going to redeem his nation. Nobody else. Nobody else. Just his nation. His people. His Am. That's why he called us Am. Am, Am. He called all the other nations Goi and Go Goi, a nation Goim. He calls us Am. Am. A M. Am. Am. My people. He called us his Am. Great nation, we are Gadol, great, exceedingly powerful, beyond the strict superlatives, beyond numerics. Because the zero of Abraham would be like the sun of the sea. That's what the seed of Abraham would be like. You could number them if you wanted to. You cannot put the number in their mind of 666 six, six if you wanted to. But a great nation. A strong people. So he speaks by the mouth, the loins of the Nobi, Yeremiah. Hear it quickly. 
He speaks so profoundly here. He talks about the Akarith as our Zachin uh, admonish us last night to be apprehensive of, to be comprehensive of, uh, that we know we can endure the battle in this great ladder in that we're in. He says, in those days and in that yam, that time, that season, says Yah, he says, I want you to understand that the Bing, the children, the little one, the children of Yisrael, they shall come. They are going to begin to enter in into the covenant delight, into the allegiance, into the consciousness of whom they are. He says, not only them now. He says, and also the children of Yahuda. He uses these words together. Or Ya'ad. Ya'ad. And will be a complicit union to the Torah of Yah, and they will be Ikat, they will be one. There will be no separation and separatism. He said, not only Israel, but Yahuda. He said, they're going to come together, walking or the, in the way of Torah, walking, and they're going to be weeping. Walking and weeping, he says, they shall go and seek Yah, their Abba. Now, if we examine ourselves, we're not really doing that today. We're not really seeking Yah. We're not doing that. Every man is seeking that which one desire of himself. We're not seeking Yah. He says, and then you will know they're seeking Yah. He says, uh, then shall they inquire, they shall ask, they shall inquire, they shall demand of the seers, and the wise men and women, they shall ask the way of uh, to Zion, Zion, the way to Zion. As the old ones were seen going up to Zion, yes I am, they will ask how do I get to Zion? What is Zion? Well, Zion is this, is the name that is prophetically associated with Yerushalayim, the city where Shalom is taught. What is the Shalom of Yah? It is the covenant of Yah. It is the greatness of his berith, his covenant, his allegiance. They shall ask, how do I get to Yerushalayim? How do I get to the wisdom of the covenant of understanding? Tell me. He says they shall ask. And then as we turn as our Zakim Benjamin tell us. Uh, it says and they shall uh, with their face they shall turn uh, toward Yerushalayim. As long as we are in captivity. Shall be. As long as our minds are captivated with this wicked sadistic world. Uh, we pray, we turn our face toward the city of Shalom. We ask the way. We ask those that are wise to teach us the way of the covenant. To teach us the wisdom of Yah. We don't ask nobody to do that. Because everyone knows everything. I said to my friend as he took me out the other day, I said, you know what? I've never had to ask men questions. I've always listened to others. I don't want to know everything. I want to know what I need to know for the moment. These Today, pontificating men and women, they know everything. There's nothing uh, you can mention they don't know. So it's easy to dismantle them because they have one little concept of it. Uh, and they try to make things or base things on other things that do not even fit in the puzzle of things. They don't know. I'd rather know how to do one thing excellent. As my natural brother would say, I'm the jack of all trade, baby boy. But I master none. He says, I can do it, but I have no skills in it. I got enough to get by and to make you think I've done it well. I don't want to know everything. I don't want to know everything. And all that we know, what does it produce? He says, with a face toward it, saying, come. I want you to hear this. Enter and come and let us join ourselves to Almighty Yahweh. In what? In his Brit. In his constitution, in his covenant, Liolam Viat, forever through antiquity, through life, let us join ourselves to Yah. We join ourselves to every kind of corrupt thing and wicked thing. 
Let us join ourselves to Omadeya in a covenant forever that shall not be shall not be forgotten. In a covenant, shokath implies that Yah will not ignore that. He will not abandon that. And the promises unto Abraham that he shall cause a great nation to rise up out of him. He cannot shock us. He cannot abandon that. He cannot ignore that. He cannot deny that. He will not allow it to slip. He's reminded of that nation. He's reminded of that people. Because he has a covenant and allegiance and alliance. Uh, he is faithful in all that he says. Because uh, he is the power of whom he is. Uh, his word is truth. Uh, it is dynamic. It is powerful. Uh, that's why the power of his integrity was made flesh. Uh, and we held it in the power of Yahshua HaMashiach. And without that testimony we don't have a damn thing. We have nothing. We can pretend all we want to. We say what we want to, we have nothing. We have nothing. It's based upon his berith, his covenant with his nation, his people, his children. Yisrael and Yehuda are going to look toward Yerushalayim. And let us join ourselves to Yah in the promises of Abraham. That's why we are poor. That's why we are broke. That's why we all are unhealthy we have no strength of constitution. That's why we're weak and sickly. The dismal. We're unfaithful. Not true. That's so why we can't be, we cannot be faithful to each other, true to each other. Ain't nothing like being true, true with each other. Nothing. He goes on to say, Yah says, my people. He said, my people, they have been or bad. They have been lost. This is what he says. They have gone astray. They destroy themselves and one another. They abandon the Torah. This is our Abbas speaking through the loins to the fifth as our Zakhin reminded us of. Through his mouth, his loshan. That he's speaking the mind of Yah, my people. They are lost. There are people that are about. They've been destroyed. They are destroyed. They've lost Trigva in the covenant. He calls us lost sheep. He said, those that I have commanded to teach them, their shepherds have caused them to go about. They have caused them to go astray. He said, they have turned themselves away on the mountain. Do you remember that? The making of a nation and the demolition or the destruction of that nation because of the creation of gods. They've gone to the high places. They've created their superior knowledge and concepts, ideas. To think that they have superior Consciousness and awareness. They've gone to the mountain, the high places for what? There was only one reason you went there. To offer up the offering. The zibach, the sacrifice. Unto the gods, the God. And the children of Yisra had learned. They've gone to the mountains. He said they have gone from the mountain to hills. Why? He said because. They have forgotten. That's what he says. They have. They have ignored. They have abandoned. They have forgotten. Their 
Rebet or their resting place. We've forgotten what we rest in our assurance. We forget Torah. I heard this man teaching last night, and those first, I wanted to say, man, don't even teach on the lead that. Let me teach you on that. I said to my Israel, write down what he says. I went right to the Torah. I'm not false. It was, I was almost giddish and childlike. So that's why I called him. Oh, man. And the folks sitting out there, the callous, wicked hearts, they can't appreciate her damn thing. No, we don't appreciate ya. Oh, that was disingenuine. Uh, you say that because you're disingenuine. Hallelujah. We have forgotten our rebet, our resting place, the place where we have great assurance, where everything is fixed. And everything, I'm so glad it doesn't fluctuate in season. Everything is fixed in the Torah. It is the same for Yisra'ya, the stranger, the gear that joined himself or self among Yisra'ya. It is the same Torah. There's only one. There's only one, Yoshua HaMashiach. You got many damned of a twisted Jesus Christ. Uh, he's a lie. You got many Jesus. The white Episcopalian Jesus uh, is different than the white Methodist. The black Methodist Jesus uh, is different than the black Baptist Jesus. It's just a fact. It is the truth. The Ku Klux Klan's talk about Jesus, don't they? That's the whole emphasis of their order. You, we are so immature and silly and so juvenile that we're afraid to concur with what is factual and truthful. You know, it's just sad. The reason we don't like that because we're hiding something in our own damn wicked hearts. That's just a fact. That's a fact. I don't ever recall the Black Panthers talking about Jesus, all right. But the clan, superior mindsets. That's just the truth. Stop it. I heard one of the most formidable news reporters that is identified at Fox News. I want to, in my next teaching, to show you something. So she said she was talking to children. Now, the broadcast comes on 11 o'clock p.m. These are not my words. These are her words. This woman of the diaspora had wrote a dissertation on the Santa Claus. Why is he white, in essence? Why we don't have black Santa Claus? Well, the woman was a damn fool to even write a dissertation. Santa Claus is a lie. It's a white demon. So this news reporter said, the fact of the matter, you children don't listen. Santa Claus is white. You don't have to buy it. It's just that he is our white Santa Claus. He is not black. I'm like, look at this silly. This is what they pay two, three million dollars a year. And she said, by the way, I want you to know Jesus Christ is white. I say, woman, I applaud you. Because I have no problem with what she said. She's right. She is right. She is right. So you have the commentary, well, black people want to have a, a someone that is associated with them on a, an oppressed system. They, and you tell me, this demon goes to every house. And give gifts. And you teach your children lies. You teach them that damn lie. And you find yourself jingle there. Uh. Boy, they trading that mind in the stores, don't they? That's why I don't like going to them this time of the year. Jingle all the way. Yo, what fun it is to ride in one hustle. Slave hole. Rudolph the red nosed demon, boom, boom, had a very shiny nose. We buy the lies. We find our babies moving to that. We need to guard their minds, Yisrael. Yeah, we think that we have to always be a part of something. We need to check ourselves out. I'm glad that I was born and raised up in the 60s. You understand? 50s, I know we're better. But I'm glad. I'm glad, Yisraya, because there were a lot of things uh, my mind didn't have to confront. 
Let me get to the depth of this. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I know people don't like me. That's all right. I don't like me at times. How about that? But I do love me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to quickly to give you the principles of a great nation and the demise of that. As the prophet Jeremiah says, they have gone to the mountains. And now they've become so dislodged from Yah, they've gone down the, to the hills. They were upon, the Torah calls the mountains the hair, the high places, the places of elevation. The extreme, the highest of places. Now they are down on the hills now, trying to find their God. But Yah gave us a great promise. He says, I will give you a constitution, a berith, a covenant. He explains what it is. It's one thing about a constitutional lawyer. They must constantly refresh themselves. It is quite ignorant. How can an uneducated Bethune, no knowledge of constitution reality, but what one has read in the preamble in the constitution, can debate a man like Mr. Obama? Damn, Obama. That is a constitution scholar. Beyond Phi Beta Kappa. Graduated head of his class. And so there are those that will say that. How did he get in Harvard? Hell, he was an excellent student. That's how he got in there. Well, I got friends that their families are wealthy. Well, hell, why don't you talk about those that have gotten in Harvard because of their great great granddaddies and their grandmamas? We don't want to draw the fair line on anything. I can't challenge Mr. Obama, Mr. Obama on constitutional reality because they study case according to the writers. Everything that law depicts is based upon constitution. I used to go to the gym. His name was Attorney Brooks. He has a law office there in Monroe. The Attorney Brooks, we about the same size. He got a gap like, we almost look like brothers, really. Really. And he would always tell me, he said, bro, I want to tell you something. He was just as straight up as they come. Even back then, we work out. He had an earring in his ear. He was a lawyer now. His wife was a his wife was a assistant district attorney. <laughs> so he would say, "Bro, I want to tell you something. Let nobody get you." He said, "That old constitution didn't work for you. You got to know how to use it. If you don't know how to use it, he said, but that's the main thing. You got to know how to use it." He said, "The average citizen knows not hey, how to use it, but it works. We have a constitution." That works. In order for it to know how it works, you got to know how to use it, all right? The establishing of a great nation. It says here in the book of Debarim, listen. Uh, he just says, now therefore begins with hearing. He wants us to hear, to develop our ability to shimak, to hear, to hear with the appliance or, or, or with the application of obeying with great resolve, with great attitude. He only names one people. He say, hear, O Yisrael. He says, I want you to hear my hukim, or my hook, my statutes. What I prescribe, the actions, or what I prescribe in any activity, you must understand them. He says, and also my mishpatim, my judgment. We are a nation that despise any kind of judgment. And Yah says, which I shall lament, which I shall teach you. To be taught, you have to train. Parents have to train up a child in the way that they should go. And when they're old, they will not depart from that, Israel. There are principles that our forefathers taught us, our mothers and our fathers, they were ignorant, but they brought about a soundness to us. This is a mature hybrid generation. The children of myself and my sister and that generation of children of that child. It's a hybrid generation. It's a superficial generation. He says that you train them. Uh, he says, why? For you to do them. Uh, why? That we may live, Yisrael. That we may have the high. We may be re restored to life and health. Uh, the constitution. We may be strengthened. We may enjoy the riches of the fruit of the land. We may enjoy all that Yah intended for the Zira of Abraham to enjoy. Our minds are constantly fertile to produce. You cannot, Yisraya, you cannot produce anything 
if you don't fertilize it. It is almost like virgin soil because it has not been contaminated. But once you plow, it will never produce like that again. It exact, or the fruit exact, the nutrients, uh, and all of the elements that is vital, uh, the ores, to produce the best crop you will ever eat. That would be the bumper crop. So that's why farmers around here usually, they like to go to virgin soil to do watermelons. No diseases. Nothing to cause diseases to set up on the fruit. He says that you may live and you may live forever in the land which Yah, your sovereign master, your avat, gives you. Nothan, he has bestowed that upon you. And I'm going to teach on this. I have maps. We had an ark to purchase the camber equipment we need. Also, I know he's listening. I wrote him today and said, my ark, he sent an offering from California. In the letter, he said, this is for the camera. You need Reach. He sent the offering on this past week. So I wrote him and said, we will use that, your offering, to purchase ink and things like that for the copier, because we need that. So that's what we will take that offering of yours and do, because we had a precious Zachim. Both are precious. That Achayabin on yesterday, they went online, they purchased the camera, the cable, cable so I can show us precise things. And when we get this building done down here, I'm going to have a huge monitor where we can teach things that you can see the visibility of that as well. All right? Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. He says, you shall not add, you shall not, yasaf, you shall not add anything. You shall not add one thing. You should not do any more than you are commanded. We're trying to please you. I will say to those, uh, don't try to make yourself righteous. Uh, just do what Torah says uh, and you will be made right. You do not yourself. Uh, you do not do no more than what Yah commands you to do. Huh? He said, do not add to the word which I command you. Neither shall you, uh, you garah, shall you diminish or take from it, Israel, that you may keep the mitzvah, the commands. The instructions of Almighty Yah, your Abab, Moshe says, which I've commanded you by the legitimacy of Almighty Yahweh. He has commanded me to teach you these things, to lomad, to train you, to guide you in the disciplines of Torah. He goes on to say, your eyes, your eye, and your spiritual and your mental intellectual perception, he says, and your eye, your eyes, your understanding, have seen what Yah did, what the Almighty One did to Bela Be'el Peora, to the Lord of the gaps, to your lords and all of them, what he did for all the men that follow Bela Be'el Peora, Yah your Abba has destroyed them from among you. Why? Because he does not want us to become contaminated. He doesn't want us to become contaminated with their lies. That's why he destroyed the concept of Jesus. Uh, and that we don't have no fear of saying, damn Jesus. You may, but I uh, damn Jesus Christ. And every Christ, damn your Christ. Uh, damn your false anointing. Uh, he said, behold, I have taught you statutes of the Huchim. He said, and judgment, even as Yama Abad commanded me, that you should do so in the land which you go to possess. We must do what he commands us. We must fashion our lives according to Torah. We cannot fashion ourselves according to some kind of philo uh, uh, philosophical idea or ideal that we have created in the concept of a corrupt mind. We cannot do that, Yisrael. Yeah. Keep therefore guard, Yishma. I have myself kept. I have guarded. I've hedged about with thorns. We must hedge this truth in our hearts with thorns. We hedge our wicked ways. We hedge our attitude. We can be distant from our ach, our hot, and we hedge about it. We don't. I don't care what they do. You're still nasty. That's the way we are. Just be honest. I don't care how kind they, they treat you, you're still nasty as a damn wicked child of hell. I don't care who you are. You know, when I used to go on the radio station, the old, old Bishop Boynes and all the women with him, they wash up. He would always say, it's just nice to be nice. Of course, he was hitting at me, you know. I'm a nice man. Because I tell them the truth. You think because Mother switched that backside, she is not nice? 
Well, you know, some people, they just not nice, but it's just nice to be nice. <laughs> one day, one of the old mothers say, Preacher, can I ask you a question? That old woman was 80-something years old, 82 years old. I'll never forget. In all of her white head covered, sleeves down to here. And she whispered, she didn't want all the rest of them to hear what she said. I was a young, ignorant jackass of a fruitcake. Still am. She says to me, let me ask you. If a woman can't preach, what can she do? I said, oh, mother. I said, you've got so much to do to teach young women to love their husbands, keep their houses clean, to raise their children right. That's one of the most vilest of spirits of a Jezebel. When a woman wants to command a man, these damn Jezebels, that's, I don't care what you say. There's no power that God's given you to usurp authority over a man's head. You want to instruct him and tell him what to do. You love him, you honor him, he'll do it, that's all right. Well, you don't know. No, you are hard-headed, daughter. You, you don't see your wicked ways, how brutal and how cruel you are, but you can see the shortcoming of this man. You don't see how brutal you are, your attitude, you get mad as hell about nothing. Uh, you don't see your way, but you can put out every little indifference in that man. You're a wicked woman. Uh, you just do what the Torah tells you to do. Uh, you honor your man. Show him honor. You don't talk to him like he's a damn child. Uh, you talk to him like he's a man. Uh, he is the final arbiter. You don't bring no shame to him. Uh, and man, you will learn how to love her. But damn it, woman, you got to learn an out of the man. You know to him, he will never, he will begin to hate you. It is right, old woman. I got to be careful with you. It's right, old, old woman. Them false Jezebels think that, you know, they, they, they want to present this false delusion that they are right. They're not the right. You out of your man. You out of your husband. He's wrong. Damn it, how many times are you wrong? He does the treatment. How many times you treated him wrong? You don't see your wicked ways. Just do right by him. Just be kind to him. Your kindness will convict him. You do a kindness that is pseudo official. See, I was kind of but there. Yes, I was nice. You can name every damn thing you've done because you haven't done much. Can't go around the world. You can name every damn thing you've done because you haven't done much. Can't go around. Cannot go around. You are so mean on the daughters. No, I love the bath of Tizayona. But I hate to see what the world has taught them to make them nickel dimes, little footy tooty minded individuals. To take the strength of a man, he gives his strength unto his woman. He's not even an effeminate man. No, I command my house. I command my house with my presence, my attitude, my authority, and my strength. I don't have to say, damn it, you're going to do it. No, I just command in my actions. And her love commands me to fulfill that her honor, what Yah commands. And that's a fact. I love truth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We got to deal with this. Daughters, you're the beauty of a man's strength. Get quiet. You're quiet here. Can you imagine? You listening out there? Don't write me your childish letters. All right. Move in quickly. <clears throat> he says, keep therefore and do them again. He commands us, as I said last week. I want to go over this principle again. He says, for this is your chukmah. When we do what Torah says, this is our wisdom. Not that we talk what Torah says. We must asa. We must fashion ourselves. Uh, we must create within us the very image of what Torah depicts and what it says. Uh, this is our wisdom. Our wisdom is not because uh, you have gone to John Hopkins University or Harvard or Johnson C. Smith, Yale, Cornell, Brown, Penn. It's because you have gone to the book of wisdom. You have understood. You have been taught Torah. You have been taught Torah. You can't read Torah. They were taught Torah. 
You must be taught Torah. You must be taught the counsel of Yah's wisdom, uh, which is his hook, hookim, uh, his touches, uh, his judgments, his ordinance, uh, his mitzvah. You must be taught them. You must be taught the life and the power of that uh, through the power and revelation of Yeshua. Hallelujah. You cannot just talk this talk. Uh, we must walk it, uh, do what it says precisely according to Torah. Hallelujah. That's the way it must be done. He said, keep that for and do them for this is your wisdom, your hukmah. It is your ability to be skillful. That you can wage the greatest of battles. That's why warriors must be skilled. Warriors are more skilled than soldiers. Man that is in the special force, he's much skilled with all kinds of weaponry than a soldier boy. We had in the military when I was in that we had the special force, we had the green beret, and we also had uh, we also had uh, what was the other one? We also had it was one more, but they was all. Special trained individuals. The Rangers. Nothing like the Rangers. Bad boys. Nothing like the Green Beret. They were bad. You go up there to space in North Carolina, all the Green Beret, they were sharp and bad. They bad to the bone. They were the only ones back then wore times. Or the Berets. Nobody but the Green Beret. You saw them, you're like, what? Man, this bow cap we got on. And these boys are stepping, they're fit, small waistlines, chest protruding, uniforms fit, tailored like. And we got on this baggy mess. And when they walked in a place, you knew they were green beret. They had the green towel in their arms, and then they had the barrettes. And they were back to the bone. So everybody was not a green beret, in the green beret. Everybody did not wear the green beret. But we all can wear the Torah. And we don't have to wear it in a palastery either. We don't have to wear it on our arm in a palastery. We wear it in our hearts. In, in our minds, we wear it. We do what it said, not by pulling something from our arm reading it. Your shoe is my right hand. I pull from his heart and, and read what his heart says. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are a nation that has such great wisdom and your understanding, your being all, your discernment in the sight of nation. Yah says your wisdom and your ability to discern shall be great in the sight of the Goyim, the nations, the people, the heathens of the earth, those that are dislodged, and those that know not the power of Yah, he says. Uh, he says, which shall hear not of your reputation, uh, but they shall hear of your statutes, your huchim. They shall hear of your ordinance, your... Restraints that are prescribed by Torah and say, Shuna, this is a great nation. This is an Amrav Abda, a great nation. It is a great nation. It's wise, a nation that has the great wisdom of Yah. He says, and they have an understanding people. What is that implying? That the wisdom of Torah will always separate you above all nations. That's what separates the people of Yah, the knowledge of Torah. And that's the thing that the God keeps us from. And that's why there is a demolition. That's why the destruction is upon us. We're not faithful in the smallest of things. We're not faithful to one another. There's no dedication. There's no love. We don't know how to love Yisrael. We just don't. We don't know how to be kind. There are those that you have met, they're kind people. You know they're kind. They don't understand what, but they're just kind. We're cold, we're indifferent. We go out our way for the world, but we want to take one damn step for the nation. Damn this wicked world. I mean what I say when I say that. No, I got away from my Achim. I got away from him. For my host, I will not dishonor, I will not disrespect her, but she will not disrespect the ways of Yah either. Give a damn who she is. I'm not going to disrespect the commands of Yah. I don't care who the man is, I'm not going to let him. If a man fell or he falls, uh, no fall because of his inability, I, I, I will not impel that man. I will not put him on a stake. I will counsel him, I will assure him. 
Come on, there have been those that live here, they have done some of the most notorious wicked things you want to think of. But I never exposed them or said any damn thing to us because uh, we are busy about it and everybody's affairs uh, and running our damn mouths. That's what the way Yisraya is. Uh, always talking. Uh, we love the house of talk and we are talking loud and saying nothing. Uh, who did that song in the days? Another the song says, talking loud and saying nothing. Talk to me, who sang that? I know Motown know that one. Talking loud and saying nothing. It was a saying in the days. You're just talking that talk, but you're not saying nothing. No substance to your talk. Hallelujah. They will say, for what nation is so gadol, so great, so numerous in their wisdom and their knowledge? And who has a sovereign or great master that is so karab, so high? His concepts are high above our mind, whereby they can approach him. They can enter into the covenant relationship of Torah. It's not coming by some damn Christianity. That's a lie. Christianity is a damn lie, Yisrael. It comes by the revelation of Torah. We must enter into the Torah. That is the door into the wisdom and the mind of Yah. He said, this one is so nigh unto them as Yah our Abba is in all things that we call upon him. Moshe says, and what nation is there so great that the chukhim of the statutes and the judgments are so righteous? We began to do Torah, our judgment will be righteous. We'll judge ourselves. That's a great nation. Great nation does things proper and right. When Shemulia came unto David, he gave him a scenario of one. That this poor man had one little ewe. And the rich man had an abundance. And the more he told that story, David was in, in rage. Because he didn't hear that wisdom speaking to him. We don't hear the wisdom of Torah speak to us. We look for Torah to, to prove us right. Torah will always prove you wrong. He is Sadiq. He is right. Righteousness is as a filthy rag. As a minister rag from a woman. That's been baked in the sun where it's enriched with maggots and flies. So when Shemul Yah finished the exert, the narrative of David said, who is it? Get the dirty bastard. I'm going to cut his head off. And he said, oh, Melach, it is you. But what was the strength of David? What was his wisdom? Can I? He broke down. Say, man. <sighs> Yeah, we don't break. He broke down. The messenger broke him. No messenger breaks us today. We are hard and cold. Hallelujah. He broke down. Hallelujah. No nation as great as you that have the great Chukhim and the Mish part in the judgment. Let me begin that one verse again. And what nation is there so gadol, so great, and chuchim, and mishpatim, so sadiq, judgment, and statues that are so right, beyond the comprehension and concept of the nations that surround you, as all this Torah, that's what the Torah is. It consists of the judgments, the statutes, the ordinance, the wisdom, the interaction of Yahweh with the people. Examples by the mouths of the prophets. That's what Torah is. A Torah that is so great, which I set before you this day. He bestowed that unto us. And he used the word rach. Only. Only. Not everyone. Only, 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 only take heed. Watch not my neighbor, but yourself. And he said, you must keep your nephesh, your being, uh, 
diligently. Do we really keep ourselves? This is a great nation. A great nation always keep watch. It is always looking to see who the enemies are. We must find out who the enemies of Yah are. And we don't realize that we're looking at someone else not the enemy, but we are the enemies of Yah. We are the enemies. I, I will show us that yesterday. Yeah, hallelujah. He said, a nation that we must keep ourselves diligently. Why? At least we forget. We always uh, shock out. We forget what we hear today, what we heard last night. Uh, he said, at least we forget because we don't watch ourselves diligently. And that's what our forefathers have done. We always said that it's them, it's those. Uh, and you don't watch your own filthy self. Least we forget, least we forget uh, the things which our eyes have seen, uh, and least they depart their sewer. They're removed from our mind because uh, they're not of any value. We don't think of them. Uh, they're not of any importance at all. But you can think on some of the most damnable, twisted mess that you remember five years ago, what your wife did, what your husband did, ten years ago, what your wife, your husband did. Uh, your attitude, you can remember that. And what she did to you, who in the hell are you anyway? A piece of dirty, funky flesh. No, I'm not going to stop my superlatives. I said to the man, the gent the other day, I said, I said to one, shut your damn mouth. And they both began, as Granny would say, they began to cackle, laugh. It wasn't funny what I said. You don't know, you don't know. You need to be quiet and listen. We need to admit of that authority to tell you, shut your mouth. And then when you realize that they are fools, they want to rise up, go from there. Get out of my face, boy. Go tell your mama to give you some titty milk. Give you a toy. Because he's a child. He's a boy. He's not even a boy. We don't see things that way. We're supposed to be a great nation among the nation we are and am. The nation of Yah. That is great. Ram. Plentiful with much. We have a Torah, we have life. Atta, within nations. That's who we are. I'm appalled at those that, oh, I've been walking this way for 20 years and they don't know anything. That is right, old woman. I'm appalled at men that are supposed to be the epitome, the example of Torah, and they never change. I'm appalled at the daughters of Tizayan. This is supposed to be the glamour of Torah beauty. And then their light is so dark and they're so ignorant uh, and they're so vile and so foul. Uh, they're so angry and so mean. Uh, you know the individual that came to visit us, he wrote me a letter. I read one or two verses. I sent it back to him. I said, thanks for the work. He said, well, I could tell that the children there, they were robotic the way they hug you. I said, this and this. What a little boy. <laughs> He's just a little ignorant, mentally twisted boy. You don't have no love. Okay. Tell me what love is. That he was led by the Ruach, he would tell you that. You think the Ruach will lead you to someone that will not crack your buttocks and will not judge you and tell you what you're... He was a boy. He's a little boy. He's lonely. He's pitiful. He's just a little old boy. He's a Naha. I call him that. He said, what did that, oh, that mean, wise? I said, no, you're not. I search it out. You'll find out what it's a boy. He's a little boy. And softer than butter. His body was soft. Soft. <sighs> softer than butter. Brace a man like that, he feels like mush. Come on, man. Do something with yourself. Tighten that stuff up. Do something, man. That's right, yo. Yes, sir. Re Can I move on? I want to get to the depths of this for the last hour, all right? He says again, he says that we must keep ourselves diligently, lest we forget the things which your eyes have seen. And we begun to remove ourselves. We depart from, we began to dispose of what Torah says. It began to depart not from our minds, not from our thought, he said from our love. The centrality or the central hub of man. I know it represented in our mind, but our words, what we live for, what, what motivates us. 
And when what motivates you, you feel it in your toes, you feel it in your arm, you feel it all over, don't you? You get motivated to do something. Come on, come on, Yisraya. It's almost like one that exercise when you may not feel like doing it, but once you begin, you get motivated and, and you go to a different level. That's just a fact. You feel it all in your, in your toes is, and your foot is. Uh, you feel it all over. And it gives you that drive and you, the motivation. That's what it does, Yisraya. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lisa, depart from your love all the days of your life, but teach them to your sons and your sons' sons. We must teach this to our sons. The mother must teach the beauty of honor to her sons, that she honors her man, she honors her husband. The man must teach the beauty of a man to his daughters, to love his wife, to be kind, to be affectionate to her. He must teach that. They cannot learn anywhere else. Uh, and we have given them to the world to teach them. You've given them to the world so they teach your daughter to be like a little two dollar whore. You've given them to the world to teach a son to be an effeminate, uh, insecure individual. Uh, and it's wrong. You teach them the Torah. You've given them to the damn television uh, to teach them every kind of wicked chorama. There is uh, to allow that to promote their strength and their beauty. To dress like a dollar whore. To look like a two cent whore. Because the daughters of Tizayon don't appreciate their beauty that is hidden for their husband. Uh, and they savor that. They save it for their man, their husband, and their youth. Uh, it's, it's, it's beautiful because uh, they keep themselves unspotted from the world. Yeah. How about that? You teach them the Torah of Yah. Teach them the beauty of Torah. Ingrain that in them. We that are getting old, we teach the young men and the daughters by the way we walk. We teach the daughters of Tizayon or Siyon, not by interacting with them and up in their face. I'm not going to disrespect another, uh, his wife. She gets out of hand, I'll rebuke her just like I will the devil. Shut your mouth, woman. Now something is wrong, man, if she gets out of hand somewhere. You're missing something. And we need to fire you up. That's right. We need to fire you up. You're going to fire me? You think I'm going to allow you to fire me up? Uh-uh. I remember the whole house I was in, Evangel Hearts Field, there was a man there. We will call each other brothers. You know that. And his wife was this arrogant, aloof heifer. And one day I said to her, you need to shut your mouth, woman. You talk too much. You may do that with others. You're not going to do that with me. I said, you need to shut your mouth and be quiet. You're not going to disrespect me. You may do that on your job because you, you're in management position, but you're not going to do that with me. You shut your mouth, woman. She goes and tells him. She tells him. And I'll never forget, I hear a knock on the door. Boom, boom, boom. I was about 220 pounds back then, but I was fit and strong. I was strong and big, too. 33 inch waist. He didn't have the physicality that I had. I would not have hit him because I would not have dignified that. He knocks on the door, and I was cooking, too. I can tell you what I had on that day. I had on a baseball cap with a striped shirt on, striped polo. And so when I went to the door, I said, hey, whoa, hey, man, how you doing, brother? He said, Brother Robert, I got a bone to pick with you. But you said to my wife, I opened up the stream door. I walked out. <clears throat> Stand up, woman. I said, pick the bone. Go ahead. His whole attitude changed. <laughs> he couldn't do he could not have handled me from a physical physical position broke him up and i said my friend you know your wife she's a stubborn rebellious woman you know what he said to me can i tell you what he said will you all buy it the only one that would buy it all right oh man can i tell you then 
he says, you're right. And the last time I saw this man, he would tell me how his wife would tell his sons. He had three sons. He's stupid. He's a fool. You should have let me crush the heifer that day. Now to crush you, you Jezebel. The man sit down. You, you, don't have the, you don't have the goals I have. Let me be the father today. I got you about one or two years anyway. You're a wicked child of hell. You do your man like that, his children dismantle his character. The last time I saw him, that's what he told me. He said, I, you know, my legs, they're almost arthritic because she keeps the house icy cold. And I looked at this man like, you let her do that? She should do it. You're not a man. You're effeminate. He said, you're right, brother. I know I'm right. She's not going to do me like that. I was the assistant one in that assembly. You think she's going to talk to me that way? No, I rebuked her. And another, his wife as well, set her straight. Well, she doesn't want you all to ride with her. I said, okay then, that, that's fine. No problem. We all go in the same way. We live in rock throw distance. It's okay. All right, man. Mm -mm. Can I proceed, Yisra'ya? I, I want to read this in better sheet. Hear this. You see, Yah has given us a mind that he has formed. You can never form strength, my young friend, unless you train. You have to train. When I said to you, I want you to play this keyboard, you have to train. When you said, I'm ready, when your youth and your, your tenacity of your zeal stood up, I said, just wait. Huh? Well, I know you could play. I heard the words, oh, he can play Riyak. By oh, yes, sir, Riyak. Uh-huh. Yes, I'm telling you, he knows what he is doing. Well, I know what I'm doing. How about that? Ray, whenever you're ready for me, I said, I would tell you when I'm ready. You understand? He wasn't as ready as he thought he was. We all are ready. We know everything, don't we? You have gone to the mountains. You had to go there for some reason. We are high minded. We are heady. It's all here. He said, now you're down to the hills. The hills were where the ants were. You understand? They were wiser than us. We didn't even consider them. And so he gives us a synopsis. He gives us a pattern. And how it is developed. He's given us a berit, a covenant, a constitution. Of his sum. The aggregates of what he is. The sum of his wisdom. The sum of his judgment. To constitute a great mighty nation. That the nations will say what is a great nation like this nation. That's why I say to us I don't care whether you buy it or not. We are people that our beauty should be excellent. I don't care where we go. I don't care what audience we enter in. We are the ones who should stand out. But I take great dignity in that. You know who I am. Here I am. That's right. That's right. I know who I am. I'm not walking like a broke back boy. I have strength. I have identity of my kingdom right. Broke as they come. But I know who I am. And the undoubtedly people wonder and say, who is that man? I know it's the truth. Oh, you boast it now. I make my boast in him. Him. We must be taught that and trained that way. The daughters allow this holly whore to train them. And you train your daughters to act like a damn fool. You train your sons to act like fools. Virtuous woman, her daughters, her sons rise up and say, Brak, mama. We brak you. They know they're blessed. They see the beauty of her hand. The grandmothers like Eunice, Daphna, 
laying her hands on Timothy, blessed him and strengthened him. To hold on to what Torah command. Where? We don't want to address us that we have gone far from Yah. And our hearts don't even think about Torah. We are silly. We are silly nation. And that's the truth. So Yah gives us a scenario here. He says here, listen to this. And I want to show us something. In, this is in Berith, a Bereshite, a Genesis. He says, I want you to understand that Abraham shall surely become a great nation, a mighty. He shall become an Atsu, a nation that is mighty, nation that is vast numerically. I want to teach us the nation even on the David's kingdom. You'll see it. We get this camera, I'll be able to show you those things. I can show you that. We're not going to study to find it out. It's just the truth, Yisraya. We're not going to take the time, and that's just the truth. So I'll take the time for you. Now when I do that, you just lift my hands and say, Yah, strengthen that man. And honor that which Yah has put in the man. You understand? And quit always trying to compare yourself. He said that, Abraham should become a great Osum, a great nation, a powerful nation. And all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. Now I ask you a question. We are part of that heritage. He did not say that they might. He said all call the nations. He began call Mishpat. Uh, all of you Mishpat. All the families of Israel. We greet you last night. He said all the nations of the earth. Even his enemies. Even the enemies of Abraham. He said, all the nations of the earth, that what he said. He did not say some. He said, all the nations of the earth, the Olam, the four quarters, every stream of the earth, uh, he said, shall be blessed in him. All the nation. They shall receive the riches of the wisdom of Torah. They shall be blessed in him. And all those that come into Yerushalayim shall be blessed of him. Are the nations blessed of, of Yisrael in this country? Or the nations of the earth? We have become so homogenized. We are not but of the cream of the creme. We are margarine, full of pollution. Margarine doesn't taste like butter. I never like margarine. Give me butter. Give me butter. Yeah, cook me a steak and butter. What do you do? Well, uh, you get that heat up high and you sear that with your knife. That's how my mother would do it. And a black seared, uh, one of those cast iron frying pans. You sear that steak on both sides. The seal, the juice is in. Then you turn that heat down. And then you push, you put a lot of butter in there. And then you cook. It doesn't make no steam. You just cook that thing. And you take that butter, put you some garlic in there. And you just keep spooning that butter over that steak. And when it's done, you let it rest for about five minutes before you eat it with a baked potato. Come on, talk to me. And a great salad. Ah. Ah. Wouldn't hurt to get me a prime cut. Mm -hmm. And cook. No, I don't want you to cook it. I like you, little girl, but I do that myself. All right. <laughs> and take that butter and just and just dip it over that steak and just let it. Ah, look at you thinking now. Somebody gonna fry a steak? Talk to me. Take that butter and just don't burn the butter. Now that's when you turn it down. Now you sear it. You turn it down. Now. And you just let that butter melt and cook it slow. Not fast. Slow and just take that butter, just keep pouring it over there. Just, just keep pouring it over there. Just let it cook. And the more you let that butter just saturate it, get down. Talk to me. Mm, mm. Yeah, man. Nice thing. <sighs> nice raw clove of garlic in that. Mm. You don't want to pollute it with no seasoning, so. Just put a little rock salt on it. That's it. You don't want no seasoning salt. You don't want any of that stuff. Butter. And base it in that butter. And mama cooked the meanest steaks. And you ate that steak. And after all that is done, you take, cut up you some onions and throw it in the pan. And saute it out. And mushroom. And shallot. And you pour that over. You got your anjou there, and you got the anjou. You pour that over. Ah, that steak. Talk to me. You 
you got a steak there. That's a real steak. Not the cheap. You got to get top choice. Ah, not, not just the food lion. Dollar ninety nine sale. No, 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 no. Need that top choice. The marvel effect in it. We're going to talk about that too. Yah gives us a great insurance policy, and we have messed up. Hear this, Yisra'ya. And Abraham, his seed shall surely become a great, great nation, and he shall be blessed of all nations. Now, what has transpired between that time? We have begun to formulate ourselves in our own little groups, in our own little activities. And we began to see the rise of the great titans, the gods, against Yah. We have forgotten the Torah of Yah to, to be the standard bearer of whom we are, just like Yah did with Adam and Hava. He gave them a living Torah. And as soon as their mind began to be removed away, they sinned. I want to pick it up here in better sheet. When Hava said to Adam, uh, she says, For Yah knows, he yada, for Yah does know, that in the day that you eat thereof, that you defy him. That you defy the Torah of Yah. Once we began to defy the Torah of Yah, our standard of living began to uh, decrease. Our consciousness, our cognitive of uh, matters that are uh, not only spiritual but socially. Uh, the day that you defy Yah, he uses this word. He says, you are in. He said, there shall be a spring and a fountain that shall flow from you. He says, your ayan, your mental, your spiritual capability to discern, to acknowledge. They shall be open. The day that you defy him, and Yah knows that, your eyes shall be open. And you shall be not as Yah, but he says you shall be as God. The day that you eat, the day that you fulfill the lust of your belly, you become responsible for your own destination by your own determination. That's what he said to her. You become as gods. That is plural. So undoubtedly there was more than one God at that time. And you can say all you want to about your damn wicked gods. A god is a god. A god is a god. And no god has more power than any other god. All are gods. You can say if it's spelled with a capital G, it means the superior. No, it doesn't. It is the same thing. They're all gods. It is a concept. It is a mindset uh, that defies the greatness of uh, of a testimony of the one that made all things. All things consist of in Yah. Hallelujah. You shall become gods. I shall. Uh, yeah. You're going to become a god. Knowing you shall experience. You shall uh, yada. That which is tough uh, and evil. Do we all do that? Well I don't think he was right. She is not right. You base that upon what? Is it based upon the principles that were taught to our forefathers? That they taught you and your mama taught you and your mama mama taught her? Was it based upon a religious experience out of the Baptist whole house and the Methodist whole house? What is it based upon? Is that based upon what Torah taught? So you have learned traditions and falsehood that are not based upon the principles of Torah. And so your eyes open to your own right. You can do wrong and it's still right. You can be a Baptist and commit adultery. You can be a Baptist and be a faggot. You can be a Baptist and be a pedophile. You can't be on the seed of the nation of Yah, of Yisrael, of Abraham. Because he said, uh, he said, discard that out of the house. Kill it. Kill it. Man call himself a woman, kill him. Don't let that feel spread. A woman that's a whole killer. A man that rapes the daughters, kill her. Yes. You have no contact, no association. You have no bearing. You have no, you don't even allow them to infringe upon you. Yeah. And so the enemy says, uh, you are the one that elect what is good. 
All gods elect what is good because they are good. They're not tough now, they're good. They're good. They're not tough. There's one word to eradicate. I'm not, I do in certain instances. Get that out of your vocab. Damn all the good. It's a German vernacular. Good. G-U-D. That's where God comes from. Good. That's how we get the word God. And good. Damn every God. Damn every God. Damn Jesus Christ. Damn the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Living more of y'all. The day you defy y'all. You become superior, and we think that we're superior to y'all. The way we think, the way we act, the way we do things. Uh, no regard. Yah, who established Moshe? Was it Moshe or Yah? Yah established him. We don't believe that Yah give men after his own heart, give us reach after his own heart, that will instruct us in the wisdom of his Torah and wisdom and understanding, knowledge. and We don't buy that. But we disregard that. We disregard what Yah says. Uh, we don't believe that Yahshua before a city descending gate gets unto men. Not to one woman. And these effeminate boys that tell you that they're liars. He did not give the gifts unto the woman. He gave her a great gift that is greater than any calling of a man. And that is the gift of a wife. A price is far above rubies. And this damn world has broken you down to be a two dollar nothing daughters. You won't dress like them. I don't want to dress like these faggot men. I would dress like me. I like the way I dress. I don't have no style. I put on anything. You know where? Inspired by some Jezebels how to dress. I inspire myself how to dress. And righteousness inspires me how to dress. We are this generation. And we're wise in our own eyes. That's why he said your eyes will be open, your eye in. And you'll be wise in your own eyes. We are that generation that's wise in our own eyes. And we are very prudent in our own sight. Nobody tells us nothing. But the Torah tells us and it commands us and instructs us. How to be that great nation. And all nations in us will be blessed. In Abraham, all nations of the earth, they will see a greatness of a people. The conversation goes on that and the, when the woman saw that the tree was tough for food, uh, you see that? Dealing with this belly, Yisrael, she saw that it was tough um, for the ma'achal, for the food, for Digesting to receive it. We think we, let me show an example of that in the spiritual and the natural that we become cognizant of this. There are things that we hear from others, we think that they're nice to hear it, and we, we give our ears attuned to that. You understand what I'm saying? For an example, someone comes with a lasa with folly, we will be excited about hearing it. Go ahead, girl. Ooh, what are they doing? I heard this about them. I, oh, what, what were they doing at that? You heard that about who? Oh, yeah, t tell me some more. I will, my friend. Tell me some more. Mm, you saw her? What was she doing? I will, my friend. So we're, we're, we're capable to tune our ears into that. We're more concerned with evil than we are right. How is my hope doing? Oh, you saw them? Oh, I saw faggot daddy. I use him. How about that? And bull dagger Afra. And the natural, that's my niece and my nephew. What did he look like? Damn Danny. Yeah. Tell him that damn you. Little faggot. Get out of my face. Don't even. Could I come that visit? Hell no. I wouldn't let him come. Oh, but you will want yours to come. My son, he was a faggot. Damn thief and a liar. Yeah. Go to hell, Danny. You can't come here. No. 
I knew what was going to happen to you once your mama took you there. As long as you're around, this strong man, he said, I will break your ass if I ever see you do that. Oh, what did he look like? Oh, girl, he had on them tight pants like a little, 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 little girl and all that. Uh, we, are, we are so hypocritical. We're so false and disingenuous. Will someone come talk to you about Torah? <clears throat> You want to make noise on that one. I know it's the truth, mama. Someone speaking the judgment of Yah. You, want, you don't want to hear that? Someone speaking the statutes of Yah, the, the ordinance, the wisdom, the direction, which yeah. is respect. You won't hear that. Yeah. Oh, sister, you got that brother. You, 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 oh, brother, hold up on that. No, no, no. I just stopped and listened to this man. I stopped everything. E.F. Hutton talking. The wisdom of Yah speak. I stop everything. I want to hear. When Torah comes, you get busy about everything. But hell, you weren't busy before then. Yah got us. You know, I like that about here. He sure got our number. This man doesn't play. I don't even play. I really don't play with my wife. I really don't. That doesn't mean because you don't play that there's no spontaneous reaction. I just don't play. I don't even laugh and stuff with her. I really don't. That's just me. We me, you don't need to stop being silly. You most prominent times with your wife, are you laughing? All right. Okay, then. How are you doing, my Emma? You cook some of them collards, were they all right? Mm. You got a little baby girl eating on them things and, and big papa son-in-law. Hmm? You cook any? He knows what he's doing with that pot. Oh, now. Talk to me. You know how I like to do my mom, I tell you. I say, Mama, do me a salad. I kind of wet my salad with just a little dressing, not much. And I lay them collars on there for my salad dressing. Want a salad? I lay my collars up. I know it's not as well as the sweet rolls and the cinnamon, but that is bad to the bone. I like that. I put just a little dress and put them collars and I pack the collars. I get me, I got a bowl that's big like that. And it has a small kind of cup inside. And I, I, I want more collars than tomatoes and cubes and, and, and the olives. And I lay me a bed of salad. And I put a little salad dressing on it. I just want to wet it. I don't like all that salad dressing. Kill you. And I've laid them greens on that. I'll put every, you may bring me a bowl of greens. I like to put everything in one plate. I put my beans around that. I lay my sweet potato in the top. And I just eat like that. I put my sweet potato on top of the collards. I don't like all these different plates to eat I put my collards down. I put my beans just round, round that plate. And get the bean juice on that salad. You got all those nice flavors. You know, you, that, you don't need no salad unless you put bean juice on it. It's just the truth. That's the way I do things. I learned that from my oldest brother. That's the way he ate. He said, baby boy, it's all going down the same tube. Don't worry about it. It all tastes the same when you get it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Moving on. Yeah. Hallelujah. And so he says, and when the woman saw that the tree was tough for food, and that it was pleasant, it was pleasing to look at. It created this lust, this appetite, this covetousness, this greed. That's what it does. To the eyes, to the eye and the tree, to be desired, to make one wise. We're always eating from our own tree. The fruit that spring up in our lives, whether they're lies or corruption. Because you think, you think it makes you wise. You think it makes you strong. You think it makes you beautiful. 
As she took up the fruit thereof and did eat, and she gave unto her husband, uh, and he did eat. And that's what we do. We give that fruit of our corruption unto all those that are in our vicinity. We give it to our children, that they act just like the crazy daddy and the nutty mama. And the nutty mama acts just like the nutty husband. And the nutty husband acts just like the nutty wife. And the nutty wife acts just like the nutty great 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 mammy. They all act nutty. Have no sense of direction. It's wrong. It's not right. We don't want to address that. And she gave to the husband uh, and he also ate. We are people that just said that we are foolish. We are people that sottish. My people for my people are foolish. He said they have not known me. The only way you're going to know y'all listen to Yisrael. I don't care what the Baptist taught you. Like, oh! ah! That's a fool. That's crazy. That's not the Ruach of Yah. That's a foolish demonic power. That's crazy. Never like that. that those, that those I dealt with even in the past. Don't do that. Don't, don't be. Ah! Quickening. That's a lie. When the word quickens, it makes you alive with obedience unto the Torah. Oh, I just felt something. You felt your lies surging in you and your hypocrisy. That's what you felt. That's not Yah. You learned that from a hoe, from the religious hoe. Ah, big, woo! I know it's the truth, man. I've been around longer than you. Oh, what? Stop that, jackass. It's stupid. Children will mock that, too. They do that. Uh, should they do that? Because they know it's silly. Ema affair was. Uh, 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 whoa! That's not of y'all. I don't give a damn what you say. I don't care if you get mad at me. I don't get mad at you. That's not of you And I'm bold and brazen enough to tell anyone you're flat out lying. You're unclean if you do that. I don't give a damn what you think. You learned that in the whole house where they were doing everything it was. Preacher sleeping with you and sleeping with your sister and your mama back there too. I will. You can't charge me of that. If you think I would rebuke you, woman, tell her shut her damn mouth. And honor you. And love you as a man. These whole houses, they did that. That's why I was never a part of them. Glad you all never allowed me to be a part of any of that foolishness. Because I knew it wasn't right. Preachers come to town, they can lay hands on everybody but me. Because he wasn't just letting every man lay his hands on him. Brother, you got a calling on you. I see it. The Lord God says he's going to bless you. Of course, I had the ability to just look. Big down, he will always say, well, you know, Rayak, he, you know, he examines things. I know because I wouldn't even mess with you, you damn dog. I said to Aki Abin one day, I said, we sent, we sent over $100,000 there. That's fact, mama. I'm not lying. I said, but it was worth every penny for Zachin Yaramayaz. I said, do it over again. Send a million. And for your wife to come out of that, I said, it was worth it, son. I said, I don't regret sending one dime. Never ask him to send my money back. I said, it was worth it. If it drew no, got nobody out but them two, it was worth every dime. I would do it again. Yeah, I would. I would do it again. I would send 100, 200,000. I said, every dime was worth it for me. Every dime. I said, I would do it again. I would. Just for them two. Just for them two. Got them two. Huh? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's worth every dime. It was worth it. To get them out. 
But he would always say, look at Ray. Look how he looks at me. He, he examined what I said. I know, devil. The only reason I didn't cut you loose long ago, I knew what would have happened. I didn't like you, man. And when I got the hook on you, nothing, you couldn't keep giving me $100,000 to hush me up. Didn't talk to nobody but my woman because I knew she would shut her damn mouth. Didn't talk to nobody else. Didn't talk to any of them. Because all was suspect and wandering, ready to say, well, you saw what happened here. All right then. I didn't tell nobody. I didn't have to say, woman, shut your mouth. I didn't have to say that. Because I knew she wasn't going to open her damn mouth. say nothing to anyone. Nobody. I would have sent a quarter of a million. We sent over 125,000. You understand? Damn money. I know money is a defense. We got the money. The wiz- you can't buy this. You can't buy this kind of wisdom. You can't buy the knowledge of Yah. You, you, you can't buy this at the paper doll drugstore or whorehouses. You can't get this at CVS. This doesn't come from Walmart. This comes from a laborer that has dug down deep in his nails are dirty from, uh, from digging into the essence of his Torah. He's finding out every filthy thing, uh, every vile thing coming out of him, uh, rising to the top uh, he, see that he, he sees that he's not worth a damn. He asks no fire. Only it's the power of his covenant uh, that gives us credence uh, and value. We're nothing. Uh, we die like the poor man. Uh, we stink like the rich man. Uh, for some reason we think we're worth something. Uh, seem like you're angry. I, uh, I like you preaching. How much is this? Uh, $100. You see what all I got? $100. Ouch. I won't argue with you. $100. Not $100. That's how Dirk would say $100. That's how Dirk would say $40. $100. $100. You sure? $100. Okay. It is so quiet. Oh, it is quiet. I like you, man. I like you being my friend. I love you, mama. Hallelujah, I do. I don't say that much. Get out of my face, man. You make me cry. See, he understands that. Get out of my face. Go, man. Go, man. I want you to see how I look, man. I care for his people to tell us the truth. As I came I'm not going to finish this today, but I promise the next time I will. Listen to this, Yisraya. I want you to listen because there's something vital, vitally important here. And the eyes of them both were pachat. It was open. The eyes, the eye in were open. Instead of their eyes allowing Yah to observe them, we began to become observant. That's what Bokhat is. We began to observe. We began to uh, depict or draw out of that what we think is valuable to us. So their eyes was open. Well, I know the truth and you can't tell me nothing. I, I know what it says here because you read a few verses, you think you know everything. And so the eyes became pokat, the eyes became open. And then it says, now, I'm an examiner of Torah. They knew that they were naked. Naked. Now, understand what that implies. But I want to read the Hebraic meaning of the words erum. 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 Now, listen now, they knew they were naked. Who was the most subtle creature in the God? Was it Hashatan? Now this is what the word Erum, I know we think it and it was. 
It says their eyes were open and they, they knew that they were naked. We know that we can't do anything without the eyes. We are naked. We just like little naked children. A naked child doesn't even know he's naked. You let a little naked boy, he will run. He doesn't care about his little uh, anatomy or little daughter. They just play. They're not thinking something crazy like we think that they would think. They just play. They, their little diapers hanging off their butt. That's all right. They, it doesn't make them any difference. They're just naked. They have no con- conscience of that. Only when they began to grow old, they, they began to establish what they think is right and inappropriate. They realize, they say, okay, then my eyes open. It says that their eyes were, that they realized that they were a room. Now, I want to show you what this means, now, a room. Hashatan was the most, what, what was the superlative? He was the most subtle. Yes. That's what a room is, to be subtle, to be very shrewd, to be crafty. We think we know it. To be beware. We are aware. We're watching everyone but not us. To take crafty counsel, not wise counsel. They began to counsel each other. They began to talk to each other. To be prudent. Wise in their own eyes. Because of their conceit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It says, and when they did that, there are two words I want to identify. We must understand. See, I, I'm, a, I, I'm a student that searched the Torah. I search words. I don't read. You must understand what I'm saying. I don't read the Torah. I don't read it like you read a book. I examine, I search. It says they realized that they were naked in room. But this is the thing right here. So they began to sew fig leaves together and make themselves, uh, it uses the word apron, uh, but Yah says they began to make themselves uh, haruah, an apron. A covering, a belt. From that it expressed, Shaul tell us to put on the whole armor of Yah, helmet, breastplate. It implies that they began to put on their own armor. Chagoa. They began to say, I would defy Yah. I would defy what Torah says. He gave them a Torah of life. They had everything to eat from. We can eat from the whole Torah. But that which Yah forbids us to do, don't eat it. You can eat the thousands of different kinds of fish with skins and fells. Don't eat catfish. Don't eat ocean catfish. Or don't eat lobster and shrimp. You can eat, you can eat every kind of split hoof that chews the cut. You can eat llama. Oh, there ain't no llama. But don't eat some damn pig feet. You understand? So they began to hago, they began to put on their armor. We must put on the whole armor of God, the righteousness of God. So they began to put on the armor. That's what we do, Yisra'ya. We hear something that we believe is an insult us. We begin to put on the armor of our deceit and our rebellionness. We began to fortify our minds. And we will look for those of the same mindset, of the same fortress to join ourselves to the battle against them, that one, her, him. That's what we do. They do it on jobs, it's a natural occurrence. They don't like the boss man, so they get together. He's not nice. And the man has been kind to them. He's not nice, he's not this. I tell us a story I will never forget when I worked at IBM. These two Caucasian women, I will separate them because all they want to do is talk. We got work to do. We got a $65 million worth of product to get out. This is the stable of the business here. This is what makes my house note. I said, no, you're not going to do that. So I said, no, ma'am, you, you sit here and do that for me, please. Thank you kindly. Come with me. And so they could not talk. So they went to my manager and said that. <laughs> he calls me in the office. Man, man, I got a house payment large. I got a wife at home. Pretty little thing. I got electricity. He calls me in the office. And my heart began to thump. It wasn't a regular beat. He begins to beat fat. Boom, 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 boom. Well, you all never experienced that. I have. He just begins to pump, 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 pump. Hands got a little wet. You your mouth get a little dry. Huh? Ah. <clears throat> he says to me, "These two ladies have brought 
up a situation that they are in and they want to address that. To me, I wanted you to be present. They didn't realize that my managers, all of them always liked me. My manager liked me. He really liked me. One day we were in a somewhat of a debate and he got himself involved and I really just broke him down like you break a matchstick. And he came back one day, he said, he came back that evening, he looked to see when there was no one around and he walked up on me, he said, boy, you made me look bad in front of my people. I'm the manager. I said, Jim, I'll never forget. I said, my friend, that was not my intention. I'm sorry. He said, come on, man. I know you, I know what you are, but don't do that to me. I said, man, look, I can't apologize to you enough, and I mean it. I will never, I will be faithful to you. I will never do that. And he didn't hold that against me. He said, all right. So they brought me to his office. They sitting there. <laughs> and back in those days, IBM did not play you messing with a woman. Don't do that. They will fire you. Fact of the matter, they fire men, mess with someone else's wife. They didn't play that. Someone's done. They were fired. Yeah. Many men got fired at that because of that. And I'm thinking about my pretty little wife and my home and my beers, mama. How am I going to eat? You were not going to find a job that paid that kind of money back then at that time. Fired from here. So my heart was beating, hands a little sweaty, mouth getting a little dry. You know, you, you. he says, I want you to to explain to him this, the accusation that you all have against him. Oh, he's very nice. He never say, he always say, do you mind, please? He's very courteous. He, he don't read the disrespect or something like that, but he always separate us. He, he moved her there, he moves me there. He won't even let us sit together. No. He said, you all brought this man in here on that charge. When he's doing what he's supposed to do, you put this man's livelihood in jeopardy. He would have been down them heifers too. Get out. He didn't say it like that, get out. He said, you all are dismissed. When he sat down, he said, look, and that's a homeboy. Don't let them fools. Man, okay. I knew my husband was going to be paid that much so I could walk. Sure I did. Say what you want to. My bills were going to be paid. I wasn't fired. You understand? This is the scenario that we were in, Yisraya. So when they realized that they were naked, they saw them fixed together and aprons upon themselves and they began to clothe themselves with their own armor. And it says this, this has always intrigued me. And they heard the voice of Yah walking in the garden, in the, in the ruach of the day, and Adam, and Adam, Adam and his issue, they hid themselves. Now these are three words that I must identify from the Hebraic language of our forefathers, from Abraham, they hid themselves. He would say that they chabach, K-H-A-W hyphen B-A-W. Listen, now I want to define this not by my own interpretation, but by the scholars of the language. See, we think we understand what things are, but we don't. And they hid themselves. Well, to chabach, it is when you find people they draw together with their secretive little uh, ideas. They don't want about us to hear it now. So they drew themselves together. They did it so secretly. And the results of that, can I tell you, that's what Chabba, Chabba is. They harden themselves against Yah. So we harden ourselves. We harden ourselves against one another. We harden ourselves against Torah. That's what Chabba is. They harden themselves. They harden themselves. They did it secretly, Yah. And so when they heard Yah, they said, shh, 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 don't, 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 don't worry, man. we are gods, don't, don't, we don't have the answer, shh, be quiet, oh, here he comes, shh, shh, here they're berating the manager when he walks, shh, shh, be quiet, oh, how you doing, uh, 
Mary J. Yosipia, how you doing? Oh, yeah, we, we're so glad. Everything is all right. Everything is all right. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, I'm so glad to see you. look so nice. Oh, you dressed up. I like them boots. and that. Man, you look nice. You look like you. One of them, one of the councils uh, of the Pharisees. Wise looking. And as soon as he walks away, we began to denigrate his character. And so they hid from Yah. They had back. They said, don't say nothing. She said, be quiet. I know he's here. He doesn't see us. That's how we talk, don't we? Nobody sees me. That's how they listen to me. We are a great nation. This is the demise. This is the demise of it. The concept of the God mind. So they hid themselves from Yah. And they did it secretly. Okay, little fella. All right. That's all right. So they hid themselves from Yah. And in the process of hiding themselves, uh, they were hardened. And so because their hearts were hardened, they began to sew together or put on their own righteousness. Uh, and that's what we do. We begin to put on our own righteousness. We can be as filthy as a wicked dog. We can be as stinking as a damn uh, truckload of hogs. Or as Tommy would say, hi, I got... And yet we began to build our own self-righteousness. We began to conclude that I'm right. I don't care what Torah says. I don't care what no one says. I know I'm right. And that's what the result is, Yisroyah. And so when that result, I, Papa didn't mean to holler like that to make you cry. Love. That's all right. Let him cry. That's all right. You're all right? Huh? So as they harmed themselves, they began to reason with each other in their secretive little dominion. They don't want nobody to know what they're doing. We think we do that, that it's all right. That's why, my friends, that's why, Yisra'ya, we have to, every word of Yah is pure. Is every word is pure? Are we the servants that will we take refuge in it? We got to examine every word. Hallelujah. I don't understand how, man, if he takes nothing but the dictionary. He sit there and read one or two verses and he examine the words and see what they mean. You want to mark your book at anything, mark with a little definition that this means that. So you can talk from a strength and a platform and not just reading, but you talk with wisdom and understanding of the words. Words are what give you understanding and wisdom if you understand the words. You can read all day long and you don't understand, you don't retain it, you don't remember Yisra'ya. So that's what they did, they habad, they hid themselves. They hid themselves from Yah in their little secret dominion. They said, this is our domain. We will cover ourselves and we will say to him, where am I naked? Well, you say I'm naked. Oh, because I can see like you. I have a constitution that is stronger than the constitution you gave to Abraham. I know what's right to do. It's almost like a young woman who she thinks she's a young woman. She says her mother, I, I'm my own woman. I do what I want to. No, you can't have her. Your mind fantasizes about living in a million dollar house, but you're living in the damn ghettos. Your mind fantasizes are making hundred thousand dollars a year. You you're working at the damn McDonald's. Let's get real, yesterday, y'all. Don't get upset with me. And so they hid themselves. That's a profound word. What have we hidden? Say that's all right. I'm all right. You hungry, little fella? What have we hidden? What things have we hidden? What things have we chava? And our little secretive little conclave. That's what they did. They began to conspire against Torah. And I'm telling you, Yisrael, you're in your little secretive conclaves. You're going to begin to conspire against Torah. You're going to begin to do that. You're going to begin to resist. You're going to begin to forget Torah. And that's what they did. They forgot the law of life. They forgot the one day Yah came in the garden. In the garden. His ruach just enveloped. The place. He did not have a form like a man. He did not have the visits of a man. They knew. They, wh wh you know, people go outside and they say, I, I can just hear the trees talking. You know, I understand what they're saying. The life of the trees and the beauty. You ever sat in a place and, and, and the whole environment speaks to you? I do. There's nothing like that. Mama down there on that pond the other day. I know that pond and the water and the coolness. Everything was talking to her. I can tell by the tranquility, how serene she was. She, was, she didn't see me, no, I was watching her, but I was watching her. Not only was I watching her, I was making sure she was safe. You understand that? That's right. She's all right. I know where she's at. As long as I know where she's at, 
That's not right. We are so silly. We are silly. So they hid from Yah. They conspired. And that's what this man is. It is an enemy of your shoot. The God, this Betim, it is an enemy. It is an enemy against Abraham. It is an enemy against the covenant. It is an enemy against constitution. We have constitutional rights. Not Americans' right. We have a constitutional right in Torah. We should be an excellent nation. We should be a great nation within a nation. We've forgotten that. Our focus uh, is on some little damn cricket from Walmart. Dig it in some damn rag pile. Yeah. I'm getting happy on that. Uh, we don't dig into the depths of Torah and become uh, saturated with the riches of the power of Torah. Yeah. We don't care about that. Yeah. Joking about that steak, some of y'all got excited. That excites me. He you know, gives us something richer than steak. He gives, he gives yeah. us, when he fed them the manna, they say, what is this? That's what manna is. What is this? And he gives us something. We say, what is this man saying? We want to get hung up in vernacular and speech. I don't care if you get hung with what I say. I don't care if you don't like the way I talk. And these are the folks that want us on a dime here. I can't do justice to that which they hid. Not that. And I don't have time to do it. So the next time I preach, I promise you I want to finish this, all right? May God's riches rest upon you all. Hallelujah. You can't do any things in a great nation that they are hidden. You can't do that. It must be all exposed. May he strengthen you all, Yisrael, you that have joined us. Beautiful time, beautiful occasion, beautiful day that Yah has given us, Yisrael. We do Barakim for all things. You that are listening by via of live stream, let us stay encouraged. Let us stay in Torah. Let us continue to listen. There are many messages on the website. You can go anytime, Yisrael, and just click on one. Don't even look for anything specific. And just listen. And just listen, Yisrael. We need to listen. We need to hear. We need to shum out, Yisrael, or what Yahweh has given us through his Torah, through the word of his messengers, and through the ark here. There's so many things, Israel, we could garner, we could glean from, that will incite us, that will give us the, the wherewithal that we could go on, Israel. We don't have to sit around bored and idle. There's much for us to do as a people, Israel. Let us stand to our feet, hallelujah. Give told on to Yahweh for all things, every situation, everything, Israel. He is in control. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Abba Yahweh, we told you for another day you have made. You have given us all life. You're high. You have given us breath, Abba Yahweh. You have given us this Shabbat day that we're able to come into your tabernacle, Abba Yahweh, where your Hashem, your name is written, and rest. And the beauty and in the understanding, Abba Yahweh, of your Mishvah and of your Torah, your will, Abba Yahweh, for our lives. We ask Yahweh you will take those that have come from near and far, Home safely today, Abba Yahweh, that your Melot, your Melikim, will be in the camp around Kol Yisrael. And in all things we do, Barak you in the precious and wonderful name of Yahshua HaMashiach, we declare, Hallelujah! 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 Shabbat Shalom, Kol Yisrael.